Growing real food and cooking real food can be kind of intimidating, but it doesn't have to be. It can actually be really easy. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you a really simple way you can start growing your own food and a really simple real food recipe. Well, hey guys, and welcome back to Hey, It's a Good Life. My name is Natalie, and if we don't know each other yet, I'm a backyard farmer here in San Diego, California. I make the most of our small space by growing food in our backyard and our front yard gardens and using regenerative agriculture principles when and wherever possible. And by doing that, we're able to yield an abundance of food, even in our small space. Last year was really all about showing you how to make the most of your space. We built a worm farm, we built gardens, we built a mobile greenhouse. And now that all of that is set up, we're able to really increase our production. So this year, our focus is really about all things homegrown and homemade. We wanna take what we're growing outside, bring it into the kitchen, and help you guys feel inspired to get cooking some real food. But today I wanna to tell you about something I wish I had known about in the beginning, and it's helping us yield abundance right here outside our kitchen door, and I just think it's so cool, and that is the Greenstock Garden. This thing is what I wish I had started with. It's what I wish I had known about in the beginning of my gardening career. It makes growing food so easy, especially if you have a small space, and today we will be harvesting part of the meal from this Greenstock Garden. It is so great for our small space, for being pregnant, for having mobility issues. Like, I can't recommend this thing enough, and it happens to be on sale right now, which is why I'm telling you guys about it. You guys know me. I'll build just about anything if it means I can save a dime on something, but this is one of those things that it's definitely worth to take advantage of the sales, and there's an early bird sale happening right now. While supplies last, get basically $50 off. You can get an extra $10 off when you use my code GOODLIFE. So I wanna make sure you guys know about that. I know so many of you wanna start growing food in your small space, and you wanna start eating real food cooking it in your kitchen. So I think this is a great solution that meets both of those criteria. Okay, I'm hopping off my You Can Grow Food Anywhere soapbox. With all of that said, I wanna say welcome to the first episode of Homemade. Let's hop into this recipe. On today's menu, we've got buttered lemon garlic salmon with a true fresh garden salad. All right, so earlier this week, we harvested a bunch of lemons together and I've got an incredible how to harvest lemons and preserve them video coming out for you guys next week. So definitely stay tuned for that. But we are gonna use some of these lemons in our recipe today. Something that I think is so cool about these lemons is that I grew them right outside my kitchen door. And you know what else is growing right outside my kitchen door? My green stock garden. This thing is so cool. I get to harvest fresh lettuce from it every single day and it is yielding so much abundance. Again, if you have a small space, if you wanna get started growing food, I can't recommend this enough. Use my code GOODLIFE with the link down below. Get yours today while supplies last. So for today's recipe, I'm harvesting this lettuce using the cut and come again method, which is a really simple method where you remove the bottom leaves and it allows the rest of the plant to keep growing so you can get this kind of continual harvest from your leafy greens. Isn't that just stunning? I'm just so amazed that this grew right outside my kitchen door. Once you've got your salad, go ahead and give that a quick rinse off. Sometimes I don't actually always rinse the leaves because I know they're not sprayed with anything. Also, shout out to my friend Samantha who gave this towel to me on my wedding day. I still have it because, well, cats. <laughs> Next, it's time to start on this garlic. Now there are lots of ways to peel garlic, but my favorite way is to cut off the ends. That really releases the garlic so easily. I wish I had known about this sooner, so I'm telling you guys about it. Of course, you can always smash it with your knife. You can run it through a garlic press. There's a million ways to get garlic into an edible form, but I really prefer to just snip off the end and slip it out. Now I'm going for a really rough chop here. I like to chop my garlic lengthwise and then flip it and chop it the other way, however you say that. And it does not have to be like crushed or minced. Chopped is, is fine. But if you prefer a more refined garlic, I would definitely recommend getting a garlic press. Mine has walked off twice now. It's grown legs and left the premises, not once, but twice. So 
Here we are, chopping garlic. Not my favorite activity, but alas, it must be done. Once you've got your garlic chopped up, go ahead and add that to some salted and peppered salmon fillets. And really you can add as much garlic as you like here. We like a lot of garlic in our house, so I added about three cloves. That's one and a half cloves for each salmon fillet. And to the top of those fillets, we're going to add about a tablespoon of butter. I'm very generous with butter. See this, this little piece of butter, he was not cooperative. He was too thin. We needed a thicker piece. So definitely add a lot of butter. It's gonna help that salmon easily remove from the skin and just add so much flavor. Something you should know about me is I like a clean work surface, so always make sure you clean up after yourself as you go. Uh, now let's talk about lemons. I like a nice thick lemon slice on this salmon and I like to save the ends and I'll show you what you can do with the ends of the lemon in just a second. So we're gonna add two slices of lemon per filet and it's gonna give it such a wonderful, fresh, uplifting flavor. Now, I don't know about you, but if you've ever gone to chop an apple after chopping onions or garlic and then it, your apple tastes like onions and garlic, it's very disappointing. So what you can do is use the ends of lemons to remove that garlic and onion flavor. That's what I like to do and that's what I'm doing here. Shout out to my amazing husband for my new cutting board. I absolutely love it. Thank you so much. Definitely wanna make sure we take care of this guy. He is lovely. All right, our salmon is ready to go into a 400 degree oven for about 10 to 12 minutes, depending on your desired doneness. Uh, there we go, the lemon is now cooperating and it's time to head into the oven. It's gonna go in the oven at about 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about 10, 12 minutes. Now let's get working on this salad. Something that you guys might not know about me is that I was once a salad bar girl. And what I mean by that is that I worked at a summer camp and I ran the salad bar. That means that I'm very particular when it comes to salads, okay? Those salads need to be chopped to bite-sized pieces. No more of this ripping huge chunks, okay? Get those nice long cuts in there and then cut horizontally and make sure they're nice and bite-sized. Next, we're gonna give some veggies a really rough chop. You can really add whatever veggies you like. I just happen to have carrots and zucchini on hand and these are vegetables that my husband likes, so that's always a plus. Little snack for the chef there. Excuse me while I sneak some zucchini. And something that my friends and I like to say is that if it's a rough chop or it looks a little, you know, untidy, it's rustic. So let's go ahead and call this a rustic garden salad. Now, of course, we have to save our scraps for the worms, you guys. Please don't neglect your worm babies. Make sure you are saving those food scraps for them. They will be so happy for it. And just like that, our salmon is done. Look at that beauty. We've got fresh, homegrown ingredients right here in our backyard farm. It's fresh, real food. Okay, and there we go. See, this is real life. I'm not the best food blogger yet. That was, uh, yep, totally just, it's rustic though, right? So it's okay. It's, it's just, we'll just, we'll just kind of go like that and, and call it good. <laughs> hey, it still looks beautiful. There it is. There is our dinner for the evening. We grew the lemons and we grew the salad greens right here in our backyard farm and you can too. You can get started gardening wherever you are. No excuses, you can grow food, it is possible. There's plenty of small space solutions. Like I mentioned earlier in the beginning of this video, one of my favorite small space solutions right now is the Greenstock Garden and I absolutely love it because it's back friendly, it's pregnancy friendly, it's so resilient, it's so much easier to set up than building your own garden beds, which is what I did and it was a huge <laughs> monumental task that I was not equipped for three years ago. I so wish I had known about this, so definitely take advantage of their early bird sale and make sure you use my link down below with the code GOODLIFE to get an extra $10 off. If you guys enjoyed this video, please do hit that thumbs up, leave us a comment and subscribe, and don't forget to hit the notification bell as well. Those are all free ways you can support our channel and help us grow because I'm gonna do a 10K giveaway and we are this close to 10K. To be a part of that giveaway, just sign up for my newsletter. There's a link down below. When you're signed up for the newsletter, you are automatically entered to win some garden and kitchen goodies. So definitely stay tuned for that. Thank you again so much for joining me today for this first episode. And if you guys have any requests, definitely let me know. 
Next week will be all about lemons and I'm so excited. So definitely hit the notification bell. I'll see you guys next week.